please stand and join me this morning in our call to worship. The words will be on the screen above. Now is the season when we celebrate that the creator of the universe and earth came to live among human beings. This is the one who comes to dwell in glory in every land. Who comes to those who have been left out with broken hearts and oppression. Stay awake. Do not miss this marvelous indwelling of God. Stay awake. Take part in the marvelous deeds of God. We join us in singing our opening hymn, Joy to the World. Lift your voices high. Let's hear those voices. Join me now in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. to invite our ushers to come forward as we have an opportunity to give back a portion of what we've been so greatly blessed with in the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Mm -hmm. 
Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, it's so good to be gathered as your people here in this sanctuary. Come and fill us with your presence. Pour out your blessings on these gifts and each giver alike and allow them to be multiplied to advance your kingdom. And we pray it all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. As we continue to worship this morning, let's take a few moments right now and still and quiet our hearts and go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, creator of the universe, come and fill us all with your presence. Let us feel the power of the Holy Spirit in this sanctuary. Let us feel that power from the tips of our toes to the tops of our head. Lord God, you are so mighty and magnificent. You love us so much. Throughout history, the human race has turned their back on you, Lord, time and time again. But you chose to come to earth. You, come to, you chose to come to earth in the form of a baby. You are fully human, yet fully divine. Lord God, as we look forward to celebrating Christmas, let us never forget the reason we come to celebrate. Because of your goodness and mercy that you pour out on each and every one of us. You sacrificed your one and only son 
for the forgiveness of sins, not just ours, but for the whole world. Lord God, as you look down upon this planet that you've created, sometimes it's hard to imagine that you must be smiling or shaking your head because of all the darkness that is in this world. But your word tells us that Jesus is the light of the world. And we, as your children, as children of God, we are to go and spread that light into the world. So let us take that light into the dark places. Let us bring hope and healing to those who need to feel your presence. Bring comfort and healing. Bring peace to those who need peace. Calm our hearts and our minds this week, Lord. Open our eyes to the needs of those around us. Help us to be a blessing to others. Pour out your blessings on us so that we, in turn, can return that blessing to all those that we come in contact with. Lord God, this morning we lift up all those that are on our prayer list, those that are hospitalized, those that are in nursing homes, those that are going through rehabilitation, Lord, those that have aches and pains, Lord. We ask you to touch them with your healing presence. Father God, we lift up our elected officials, we lift up our military, our men and women who serve our country. We lift up our first responders, Lord. We continue to pray for those that put their lives on the line each and every day, rescuing people through earthquakes or mudslides or wildfires. Help us to be your people, not just in this season of Advent, but all year through. We thank you, Lord, for all the instrumentalists this morning, the gifts that you've given them, Help us to use our gifts as well. Each of us have been given gifts to use to advance your kingdom. So allow us to be used by you this year. We pray this all in the name of your son Jesus who taught us to pray this prayer when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. So lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Now let us get ready for our Easter, our Easter, our Christmas cantata. Amen. <laughs>
gather to worship Christ, the newborn King, Jesus, the one foretold by prophets hundreds of years before his birth. One of the prominent themes of the Christmas story is that of hope. It was this hope that sustained the chosen people of God, the nation of Israel, as they awaited the promised Messiah. The prophet Isaiah had assured them that their hope would be realized in a child and that this child would be called Emmanuel, God with us. The hope of the ages resided then as it does today in the promised Son of God. Isaiah once said that God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Never is that more evident than in the Christmas story. Rulers, kings, and anointed leaders typically arrive from places of prominence with royal announcements and pedigrees. But in the birth of Christ, nothing follows normal protocol. The prophet Micah foretold of the tiny village of Bethlehem from which this promised Messiah would come. But until that day arrived, Israel impatiently waited in darkness and despair, longing for an end to this seemingly endless night. Thank you. 
young couple from the small village of Nazareth, Joseph and Mary, were engaged to be married when they had an unexpected encounter with God. Angelic visits to each of them individually confirmed the unimaginable. They had been chosen by the creator of the universe to become the earthly parents to the long-awaited Messiah. Once this child was born, they were to name him Jesus, for he would save his people. Initially overwhelmed at this unexpected news, they willingly accepted the call of God to be his humble servants. When Mary was nearing the end of her pregnancy, Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census to be taken of the entire Roman world. Each family was to return to the ancestral home for registration. Joseph, taking Mary, 
returned to his hometown of Bethlehem, the city of David. Upon arrival, they took up temporary residence in a stable because they had been unable to find a place to stay. While they were there, Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger. On this night, the holy child, heaven's child, the son of God had come to earth. It was an ordinary night on a Judean hillside just outside of Bethlehem where there were shepherds keeping watch over their flocks. Shepherds were unlikely candidates for earth-shattering news, but this was not a night like none other. Suddenly, the blackness shone with extraordinary light 
as an angel proclaimed to them the news of Christ's birth. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. The skies were instantly filled with a great company of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. The shepherds immediately went with haste to Bethlehem to see this newborn child. Arriving at the stable, the shepherds did indeed witness what the angel had told them. A young mother and father, a humble manger stall, and the newborn holy child. All who heard the story of what the shepherds had witnessed were amazed. The young maiden Mary, chosen mother of God, treasured all of this in her heart. As Bethlehem slept, the king of the angels had come into the very world his tiny hands had once helped create. Earthly parents and shepherds could only marvel at the miracle before them.
the story of Christmas. God becoming human is filled with the unlikeliness of elements. God could conceive, only God could conceive such a plan. He chose an unlikely setting for this story, the tiny village of Bethlehem. An unlikely couple as supporting characters in this story, Joseph and Mary. God chose an unlikely audience through which to broadcast the news of Christ's birth, common shepherds. And he chose a newborn infant as the lead character in this life-changing story of redemption, love, and grace. Jesus, the holy child of Bethlehem. This is the compelling story of Christmas. This is the miraculous story of Bethlehem's child.
enjoyed that? Yes. Well, special thanks once again to our music director, Tom Bates, and to Woo! Norma Ashley. Yay! Our chamber ensemble, beautiful instrumentalist this morning. Thank you so much. Yes. And last but not least, our chancel choir. And we have a tradition here before we leave. We're going to stand up and join hands across the aisle and sing our closing benediction. Blessed be the tie that binds.